Uh, I'm going to start by teaching you guys how to make some um, abstract brushes that I like to do. Um, like, like when I first started making brushes, I, I avoided it for so long because I didn't know how to make something look like something. Like I didn't know how to make something look like smoke or like a cloud or, you know, I, I couldn't do that, you know, so I just didn't do it for the longest time and don't let that hold you back. Do some abstract brushes. You know, if they don't look like anything, just call them abstract, you know? And I've actually created brushes like smoke and all that on by accident through making abstract brushes. So let's start with brushes. Basically you can use whatever um tool you want to use. I like to use any of the tools that you can update really heavily well, you know, edit very heavily. Um, so let's start like with pixels. With pixels, when I'm making a brush with pixels, I'm just very, very um, random with it. I just pick things and I'll just like throw it around like that. I'll have like the opacity down too. So some places are darker, some are lighter. And I'll just go through and randomly put them like that and that I would make into a brush it's that easy to make just a simple brush and when you're done and you want to save them all you got to do is click the little three lines up here and um, go to export share I'm talking really fast I just realized that's why I'm kind of slowing down export share I always save them as ping and then you're just gonna hit save image and now that should be in your images. Okay, um, now let's go to a different one. I'm just going to clear this. Um, let's see. Procedural has a lot of fun ones I like to play with. So let's just say like scaffold and you're going to go and click right here to edit it. And you can mess with all sorts of stuff. Like the thickness, you can make it really thick, you can space them apart, scatter them. And I'll just use this to make um, a brush too. Like just like randomly put them about. Also if you mess with size that makes them look a little different. And you know, that right there, I would turn into a, a brush. It's that simple. Just experiment, play around. You know, there's so many different ways you can do it. Hold on, I have hair on my screen because I brushed my hair. Okay. Um, now, let's see. Um, uh, also, I'll use text even to make brushes. Like, the, of course, I have the ones that are like symbols and stuff. But you can just use like things like parentheses or commas, col semicolons, anything. Also, I like to use smudge a lot. If you use smudge and turn on paint, um, you can turn any of your old brushes that you've made. These are all my brushes. Um, you can pick one. Let's see, I'm going to turn that down a little. And I use the line. And I would... You can make that into a brush, or let's try to turn that into a brush. And so I use that a lot when I'm making brushes, you know, do something cool. Um, that one's already one I use that on, so let's see. Even like, and anyway, I use those a lot to make brushes. You can also do it. As a circle, I turn up the strength if I'm going to do it as a circle. And anytime I'm doing circles, at least on this size canvas or this shape canvas, I always make them like vertically oval, like that. Because for some reason, whenever um, you save them, like I'll, I'll show you, if if you just do a regular circle, they come out like horizontally oval. And I'll show you what I mean real quick. Let me save this, and then I'm going to save a circle circular one. Hold on. So I always do when I'm doing circles vertically oval because see this is a perfect circle okay. Well it's not perfect but you know, you know what I mean. 
And, okay. This is how you add brushes, too. Show you how to add brushes. You would go to the brush, then you would click the little plus, or you can also click, down at the bottom, you can click the add. So I'm just going to hit the little plus sign. Then you're going to hit photo library, and then go pick it out of your camera. You can zoom up on it and stuff here. But anyway, so this is what happens to circles for some reason. Well, okay, I'll just, I'll just explain it. Like, if you, um, so basically just compensate by making it, like, longer vertically. And then they should be round. Um, or you can take the one, how it turns out, like that, and transform it. Like, if you have a perfectly circular brush, and then you upload it, and it becomes horizontally long... I, then I, you just do this and transform it and you would save that and upload that and it should be a perfect circle. Okay, so now I'm going to get into the actual abstracts. Um, I'm going to start with the vector abstract. Uh, what was I about to say? See, I forget things when I get nervous too. <laughs> um, let me see. Hold on. I have my notes. Um, okay, anyway. So what you what the first thing I do whenever I'm doing an abstract is I go and pick the colors. I have some um, color swatches that I made myself that are in my gallery that you can download. Um, they're a little further back, but you should be able to find them. And that's and I'll pick my colors from here that I want to use. Let me see which colors I want to use. Mm. Those are too similar near the bottom. And, yeah, I should have picked the colors beforehand. So I'm not sitting here doing this in front of all y'all, but it's all good. I'm going to go with these blues and browns right here. I think I'm going to go with these oranges and blues. Okay. So, I first I picked the colors. Then we're going to go to vector. You want to make sure gradient's on, fill's on, smooth is on, and simplifies up. I mean, simplify doesn't have to be up, but I prefer it this way. And so the first thing we're going to do is all I do is, okay, I still have circle on. You want to make sure that's off. <laughs> but I'm just going to make like squiggly lines like this. No, I'm not too worried about how they, what shape they are. I'm just going around, just filling it up interestingly. And after that, before I do the next, um, no, it's a reference. You, you you bring it in as a reference. And that doesn't count as an image load. I'm going to go to the layer above like this. And I'm going to go pick the next color. And do the same thing with that color. Like that. And now the reason why... I put it on the layer above this is so that I can go through the blend modes and so I'll do each color and go through the blend modes until I find something I like in there. I like the burn. I'm going to stick with the burn and then I merge that. It does that sometimes. If it does that where you merge it down and it changes, all I do is I go and I color fill the bottom layer. and. That, that helps for some reason. And I just go pick like this. Mm. I'm going to go with that color. And then merge that down. And that should keep it the way it is. Okay, so then we're going to go a layer above again with the next color. You're just going to do that for each color. And I'm going to do some squiggles with that. And go through the blend modes again. I like that, so I'm going to merge that down. And the same thing again. So you're just going to do that until you use every color. Where 
layers down. Last color. I'm sorry, I'm not talking much. It's just because it's kind of repetitive. Okay. Okay, and that should be what it looks like right now. Sometimes I'll pinch it at this point. If I want some extra movement, I'll pinch it like that, which will give it a little extra movement. Sometimes I leave it like this. I think I'm just going to leave it without the pinch for now. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm feeling. Maybe I'll do the... Like, with abstracts, you know, it's not trying to make it look like anything. It's all about experimentation and playing around, so... Just play till you have it how you like it. I'm just gonna do that. Okay, so that's pinched. There we go. Now, this next technique is something that I taught whenever I did my textures class. I'm going to show you guys again. Um, it's the thing with when I use the um, line screen, hatch screen, or dot screen. I'm going to use dot screen for this. So you're going to go to the top one right here. And you're going to pick a filter. And you're going to go to dot screen right here. Now I always turn up with but you see why I like dot screen? You see how some are small dots, some are bigger dots, some turn into like diamonds, some look square. So I really, really like the way dot screen works with this. And then I'm just going to go through the blend modes. I pretty much go through the blend modes anytime I change anything. And then I'm going to turn that down like that. You can always turn the opacity down if it's too um, bright or too colorful. And then anytime before I change the top layer, though, if I've already had it at a place I like, I'll always make a copy of the bottom one just so, you know, I can go back if I want. Also, something that PK told me, like, forever ago when he was, like, giving a... Just, he was just doing a stream and telling people about abstracts or something. Save every time you get somewhere you like. Because that way you can always go back and play with it again. If you <clears throat> like take it too far or it isn't getting somewhere you like, you can always just go back to the a spot you did like it at and play with it more. So always save as a copy. And so I like the way that looks. Now the next thing I'm going to show you guys is what I call a, the difference bloom technique, which I came up with, and I, you'll see why I call it difference bloom. It's really not a very creative name, so let me show you that real quick. You're going to make a copy of it, pick the top, top one, and hit difference. It should be a black screen like that whenever you do it. Then you're going to filter the top one and pick bloom. Why I call it the difference bloom technique. And you see how you can start seeing the colors coming through right now? And I just do that over and over and over again. Of course you can just turn up the radius to make it go a little quicker. This is why I always have so many filters on my abstracts. <laughs> and so you're just going to do that until you get it close to where you want it. And I'm just gonna do it one more time. Another thing you can throw in, which can sometimes be very, very, very cool, is throw in pixelate while you do it. Like that. And that's gonna add, like, you see, like squares and stuff everywhere. You can even do it again, make them a little bigger. And that gives, like, the squared look to it, which I think is really cool. Sometimes I'll sharpen it too when I'm doing this to make the square part show up more intensely. Like that. And I, I just think that's a really cool thing to do. 
Um, now it's still a little dark, so what I do to um, take care of the darkness is I'll show you right now. Um, I'm just gonna copy that down. I just use the uh, um, screen blend mode in order to do that because screen like lightens it all up. So what you would do is have two copies of the same thing, pick the top one and just hit screen, and that's just gonna lighten it up and bring out all the different, uh, you know, brighten up all the colors. You can also, oh, I didn't mean to copy down. That actually kind of lightened it, up. Uh, lightened it up even more, but. Just go back. Another way to, you can lighten it up is filter exposure. So you're just going to turn exposure up and that's going to lighten it up even more if you want to do that. If you need to darken something down you can always use multiply or over, overlay blend modes. Those help too for like darkening things up. Okay so anytime I've done something to the top I always go through the blend modes because you never know what you're gonna find when you go through the blend modes again abstracts are all about experimentation playing around so you never know you might find something really really cool in here I personally think that's cool so I'm just gonna save copy so I can come back to it later I saw the other one I like kind of too. That I'm going to save to come back to later. Was it this one? Okay, I'm going to save this one and come back to later. You know, I, I always go back later and play with them. Okay, so another thing you can do that I do a lot when making abstracts is go to the top. Like make a copy and go to the top one and color just it and change the hue. Okay, so something I do a lot while I'm uh, trying to get the abstract to where I want it is I'll make a copy, go to the top one, filter it, go to a color adjustment and change the hue. And I just look through here for anything I like. And once you do that, you just go through the blend modes. And I do this a lot when I'm stuck and trying to find like something I like. I go through the blend modes constantly. Like anytime I change anything because you end up in cool places sometimes doing that. I'm going to just stick with that for now. And again, I'm going to go through the blend mode since I changed the top one. And I do that constantly. Because sometimes you'll find something really, really, really cool. Other times you may not, but that's perfectly fine. It's all about experimentation, playing around. There's no right or wrong way to make an abstract. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I use Anaglyph 3D also to get some cool results. So what I'm going to do is make a copy again, filter the top one, and go to Anaglyph 3D. Now this makes like a blue copy and a red copy of it and you can like separate them like that. I'm going to go with a lot of separation. The contrast, of course, you know, changes up the contrast of it, and Degos like brightens up. I think like Degos brightens up the red layer. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the technical reasons they work. Um, <laughs> again, I'm just gonna go through the blend modes because I changed something. This is constant while I'm doing it. But normally what I do after anaglyph is I like to filter and adjust and color adjust. And I'm just going to go with that for now. Because it always ends up a strange color. Again, I do this constantly. I really do. It's the thing I do the most. Anyway. 
not really anything I like right now, but that's perfectly fine. Two, let me see. Let me see, let me, um, I like to transform the edges out of it. You don't have to do that. Again, it's about, each abstract is like a different journey in itself, so it sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. Oh, I'm getting congested and I don't know why. Anyway, so, um, that's how I'll use that. Another thing I like to do a lot, like these are just all little techniques that I've learned through doing them that I like to do just to see, because, you know, you can get to different places, you know, depending upon what colors you're using, what type of tools you're using. So let's go to the top, and what I'll do is I'll color fill. I like using the crayons because there's so many different colors right there to go through. So I'll do that. I'll color fill the top layer. And then I'll go through and see if there's anything I like. Like if there's anything cool going on, I find the coolest one. So let's, I think that one's cool. Now I'll set this up over here so I can open the menu and see it at the same time. And I'll go back to color fill and I'll just go through the different colors. looking for something that I like personally. Eh, I, I kind of like this one. I don't know. So, you know, there's sometimes there's like 20 you like, which is very normal. I'm going to go with this one because I think it's interesting. And I'm going to merge that down. Again, I'm going to go through the different um, blend modes. Again, I do this Seriously, constantly. Sometimes you can just turn off since you have one underneath it. Because you'll have like a bunch of copies you made because you didn't want to mess up that or that. And I'll go through <coughs> with that one too. Anyway, I'm just going to stick with this for now. And, um, let's see. So, I think that's looking pretty cool. Of course, um, let me see if I can do this. I'm going to do the difference bloom technique again just to see. I, I do that sometimes like three or four times just to see if I can get something cool to show up. I'm going to do it again. And yeah, this is a little, you know. <laughs> boring of a part, but anyway, so I think that's kind of cool. So what I'll do, I'm going to save the bottom one because I want that. I'm going to merge that down. Let me think. Um, hold on. I'm going to change the colors up a bit by messing with hue again. I'm going to find something I think is cool. I'm going to go right there. And then I'm going to color fill the top. Right now I'm just trying to get it to something attractive just by doing the same things I was talking about. Just playing around with them some. see. I'm just gonna try this. Again, like I said, it's all about experimentation. Sometimes it works out great. Sometimes you're there forever trying to get it to get to something really cool. It's really 
different each time. So right now I'm just figuring out where I want it and what I want it to do. Oh, I like that. Okay, you see, you just keep messing around until you get it somewhere you like. I personally really think that's pretty, at least me personally. I like that one a lot. I'm going to turn up the exposure just a tad. I'm going to see what pinch looks like. And that's how, that's something I would upload personally. I like that a lot. I'm going to save it real quick because I like it. <laughs> so that that's where I would leave it and call that done. Of course, I can't help but go through the blend modes one more time and just see, you know, if there's anything cool going on there. That's kind of cool. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it at that because I think that's really interesting. Um, does anyone have any questions about anything right now before I move on to the next thing? I don't know why I just got so congested. I guess I'm... I don't know. Okay, cool. What, Fazbear? This was with Vector, just Vector and um, blend modes and filters. That's all this is. I use like any brush though with um, abstracts. I make my own a lot too. Okay, so I'm just going to turn these off so we can move on to the next one. Now what I do for whenever I'm going to do a procedural um, bristle brush abstract, I always test out the colors first to make sure, because sometimes when you blend them together they can look muddy or almost like poop. I mean honestly, if I'm going to be honest, it's like, sometimes they look like, like I'll show you what I mean by that. Hold on. Da, 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 da. I should have put these lower. Those are okay. Here we go. Uh, let's just go with these. I'll show you what I mean by that real quick. Like if I did this blue with like um, this brown. I, I I don't know. To me, it looks like I don't know. It just doesn't. It looks gross to me. But anyway, it's just me. Let me ask, let me read that real quick. How do you answer this? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what your, what the question is. I'm not sure what the what you're asking. I'm sorry. I'm not very smart sometimes. Okay. Um. So this is how I test out what colors I'm going to use. I'm gonna show you real quickly. I would simply just do them and see how they blended together. So I do each color and see because you never know how they're gonna blend together and what they're gonna look like when you blend them together. So. 
I do this every time just to make sure they look good together and when they blend they don't make like any ugly colors that I don't like. And let's see, let's it only takes me like I can fill up the whole page trying to figure it out. I've already picked the colors I'm gonna use because I had to like do different stages because if I was gonna sit here and fill up the whole thing it would take forever they're in the layer panel yeah so anyway I would do that to make sure the colors went well together I already picked out the colors I'm gonna use to make this quicker but let me go grab them I'm not trying to draw. Okay, hold on. Um, I think I'm too. The colors I. Oh my god. I am not trying to hit the layer. Uh, the colors I chose were these right here. I, I know you can't really see what I'm pointing at, so I'm just gonna put them out real quick so you can see them. the colors I decided to use for this one. I used a brighter red though. I used a brighter red. And I know I'm not talking right now and I'm like <laughs> I don't know what to say sometimes. I'm trying to be interesting. I'm sorry. Um so these are the colors I decided to use for the abstract that I'm going to show you guys. And those are the colors right there. Okay, so next I'm going to, um, what, what I like to do is I like to make a diagram of where I want the shapes to go. Because when I do these, a lot of times I do a bunch of different shapes. So I'll show you how I decide that. I decide that before. So I would go and just get the regular brush way up at the top like that. And I'd use the square and circle tool to decide where the shapes are going to go. So I do like this and just randomly put shapes about. just do that and like that's how I decide where the shapes go prior to it then I would decide which color I wanted to be my background color I, and I go to a layer above and I always fill in the background first so let's see what color do I want to be the background color well I already chose I think I chose this color make sure you go back to freehand oh I'm still on that and you go back to procedural and I would fill it in. What I like to do when I'm filling in the background color, I'll show you what I like to do. I like to change up the color a little bit, like make it a little darker. I, I don't know, I like giving the effect that like you're actually painting and you're trying to um, mix the color and you get a little off, but you still go with it. I like that kind of, you know, lazy, or, you know, feel to it. I, I don't know. I like it to be a little like, oh, well, I mixed it wrong, you know. So I like to go in with a bunch of different shades of the color and mix it kind of. And anyway, I'd fill up the whole back just with different shades of the same color like that. I already have an example of it um, mostly colored in that's how it would kind of look near this point and then I go in I did that just so I didn't it just
takes a long time. And so um, I do the same here. Sometimes I like to mix a little, put a little white underneath it with the bristle brush so that, um, I don't know, I just like how sometimes little streaks of white look. That also looks like you didn't mix the paint fully together, and I like that. And I would just fill it up like this. I'd blend a little at the top sometimes. Again, I would darken it a little here and there. Put in a little darker shade. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I like to do it very um, loosely and roughly like that. If you I do if you want to fill it up perfectly like if you if you don't want it to be messy I'll show you a way to do that real quickly you would go to like a layer above it and just do this just fill it up not worrying too much about anything you don't really have to worry about the edges if you wanted to do it exactly so you go to a layer above like that fill it in then you would go underneath it like that and you would uh, use vector turn off gradient and only have fill on use square I'm just hiding it and you would make the square underneath it and then simply go to the top one and click on and that would get it so it's you know the lines were perfect around the edges and stuff that's how I do it when I want it to be perfect, but I, I like the more loose, rough, you know, oh my god, I have that on again. Ah. Hmm. It's doing square again. I mean, it's uh, just testing. Hold on, make sure the cat isn't frozen, just in case. I, okay, good. <laughs> He's making sure. So anyway, I would do that for all the colors, fill it in with different colors and whatnot, like that, until I got it fully filled. Let me clear these, I don't need those. And this, you know, I would fill it up till it was like this. And what I, what I like to do, instead of just leaving it like this I like to go in and use some different um, different brushes to make it feel more like paint so I would go I like to use the spatter brushes for this I particularly like this one for it though there's I think hold on there's a certain pack someone's a certain pack I think it's Katama and she has I think a lot a lot of ink ones that are good for this. Yeah, Katama's pack has a bunch of ink ones that I like to use for this. So, that's the place to get some really cool, like, spattery looking ones. But anyway, I like using this one. And I'll go and, like, grab the color and just add this every here and there, like, you know, like spatter. I don't know, I just really like how it ends up looking at the end. And so I'd go and add this different places. And I'm just doing it quickly. I would take more time on it normally. I just like to fill it up. You don't have to um, fill it up fully. I like it really, really messy with a lot going on. That's just how I personally like it. Of course, you don't have to do it that way. Again, I darken some. It's up to you. It's your, you know. I just like adding a bunch of spatter going on and a bunch of stuff going on. And I like to throw just some stuff over here. And anyway, I just like doing it that way personally. Again, everybody's abstract tastes are different. And 
sometimes I also like to add like there let me see if I can find the right brush this brush right here I'm not sure who this brush is by but I like using this one a lot too hold on I had a different one that I actually edited so it's just it, but anyway, you would go. You can go through. There's so many different brushes. Let's add some, just some white lines every here and there. Just anything that adds to it looking like paint, I like to do. I just do whatever, like I like that. I can do. You can do that. I mean, just whatever feels right at the moment. There's no like right or right, well, ugh, right or wrong way to do it. It's just personal preference. And anyway, I I could do this forever. These are some Academas, I think Academas brushes, which I also like using a lot when I'm doing this. There's just so many cool brushes that can add to a painterly look to things. Let me see. Um, I'm trying to find a certain brush. Sorry. Um, these are some of my brushes. Okay, there's one of my brushes. That you can just add little things about. So basically I would do that until it was to my liking. I already have one that I completely filled up. Now normally I do it on the same layer but whatever that's fine it doesn't matter. So anyway this is the one I did prior that was to my liking. Oh yeah there's a certain brush I made that is really cool to add like cracks to them. I don't where are they? I call them like crack desert ground or something. You can download them. They add like cracked. I have so many brushes, it's ridiculous. I'm sorry. <laughs> Where are they? I don't see them, but anyway, they exist. I know that much. <laughs> um, I like using this one too, that, this uh, wood one. I, I think it's by Snick, if I'm correct. And I use that to add like deeper lines and stuff, you know, more noticeable lines. Um, trying to find a certain brush okay well I don't know where the brush is but it's called like crack desert earth that's how I got this crack right up there was with that I'll show you what this wood one does because I like it a lot when I'm doing this it just adds like some lines if I, I didn't think of, which I think looks good and you know because it just makes thicker lines now the next thing I do is I go ahead and I do uh, Theo's impasto technique in order to make it look, um, you know, more paint, like thicker, you know, like thicker paint and stuff. So I go ahead and I'll do that real quick. I'll show you guys how it's done. I'm not going to go like deep into it because it's a really long process. Theo did a class on it and also if you go look at my texture class tutorials, like they should be under, uh, in my gallery, it, it's from when I did my texture class, there's a... Uh, explanation a really uh drawn out exclamation uh, oh my god if i could talk right a really good explanation of how to do it so i'm just going to run through it quickly you start by making a copy go to the top one i think i have like three copies now okay <laughs> okay go to the top one filter color adjustment and turn the saturation all the way down. And then we're going to make a copy of that. So you should have, why is it on on mode? Okay, so you should have two gray ones and one colored one. So two no saturation, one colored one, and you'll go to the one above that. So now you'll be using four layers. So go to the one above that. Yeah, he wants he wants water. As he he has to have it out of the faucet. First because he's uh, a problem cat like that. So you go to the top one, 
above it and color fill white and turn to different. You have your water. What do you want? <laughs> I think he just wants to ruin my class. Um, <laughs> okay, so then you're going to merge down. So, uh, um, so you color, so you should have th three, you go to the one above, you color fill white, hit difference, then merge down. So you should have this darker one, this darker gray one, this lighter gray one. So, well, if it's, sometimes it'll be a lighter gray one, darker gray one. But anyway, you should have two different colored gray ones and a colored one now. You're going to, ah, select the top one. I'm, I'm tripping over myself. All right, you're going to select the top one and turn it to 50%. I'm also trying to talk slow because I know it's kind of, you know, off, a little off. Like, I think the, my voice comes through quicker than, like, the actual picture updates. So turn to 50% and hit transform. And then put in two. Sometimes you can look at it right now and see what's indented because it, I want everything to be raised, but it doesn't work like that necessarily. So I see which one has the most. It's either going to be negative two or two. Whichever one has what I want raised, I go with. So that one has a lot raised. That's pretty good. Eh. And I just see which one. Oh, that was off has the most stuff raised. I like this. I think that has a good amount raised. And it should look like this now. You should see the texture coming through if you've done it right. And you're going to merge down. Now you're going to take the gray one with the texture coming through. Copy it. So you should have two of them now. Turn the top one to overlay. And now copy down until it's to the intensity you like. Like you can copy it down once, twice, three times. Whenever it's to the intensity you like it at. Then you're going to merge them down. So now it's only one thing. And hit overlay. And that should give you raised texture and places. And it looks really cool in some places. So there we go. And that's how you get it like that. Now it's nice and raised and looks like paint. And that's how you could just stop here, but being I love to play with filters and blend modes, I'm going to play with filter and blend modes. I'm just going to really try to get this to a place I like it. I'm, I'm going to tell you guys what I'm doing along the way, but I pretty much taught you guys all the techniques. So I'm just going to go ahead and use those right now and try to get it somewhere I like and show you what's possible. Um, so let's make a copy of it. Ah, what do I did something wrong? Okay, I'm going to copy down. Let's see. I'm just doing this because I do this all the time because I'm, I'm a weirdo. The first thing I do with these normally, though, is I like to do that thing where I color fill and go through the different um, blend modes. I like to do that first with these. Normally Difference has some of the cooler um, results so a lot of times I'll just start there. That's a little too green going on there. <laughs> but you know I'd go through those see if there's anything I like in there. Right now as there's actually not which I like in here is a little too extreme. You can go down to the darker ones. I think that one's cool. That one's cool too. Anyway, um, let me. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and do the difference bloom thing first. That's where I want to go first. Difference filter bloom. Does anyone have any questions about anything while I do this? Any 
questions? If not, that's fine. So, basically, I just did a different bloom until I get to this point. I'm going to... Do I have a copy yet? Uh, make a copy of the bottom one. Merge that down. I'm going to use screen to lighten it up. So, again, to use screen, what you would do is make a copy. So, you should have two copies of it. Select the top one and just hit screen to lighten it up. Merge down. And I'm just going to go through the blend modes again, like always. <laughs> that's the one thing I can tell you guys that's the most important thing when doing abstracts is just experiment. Just play around. You never know what you're going to get. Sometimes you'll get something incredibly cool. Other times it may look a little janky for a while, but then, you know, it'll get somewhere cool. Like, this is kind of interesting, you know, so I'm going to save copy. As always, I like to save copy anytime I get it somewhere that's interesting to me. That way I can go back and play with it later. Um, that does take up a lot of space in your gallery, so make sure once you get the places you want to get and you think you're done with it, you go clean out your gallery some or else you're going to get full quick. Um, let me see. I'm going to try this. Again, you never know what you're going to find. It's fun, you know. I just enjoy it. It's something that I have come to really, really enjoy that I find very, very, very relaxing. I'm just, I'm just right now just playing around looking for something that I think looks cool. Like, that's pretty cool. That's all you really do is a lot of experimentation and playing around. I know I keep saying that, but it, it's true. It's actually very relaxing and very fun to do. And you can create some really beautiful things that you didn't know you could create and it's all original it's all your own and it feels so good to create something that is all your own and receive praise for that that is a wonderful feeling anyway I just keep playing I think I'm gonna I think I know what I'm gonna do just so I don't have you guys sitting there for like a year <laughs> Connor's like tapping me on the head like keep talking <laughs> like I don't know what to say right now <laughs> I don't know what to say I'm just uh I'm just playing okay I think this is the color that I found something I liked and I think I'm just gonna go with this for now why are you doing that why is this, this one's on? Alright, no. Normal. Oh. Okay. And I'm just going to go through again. I'm trying to just get it somewhere cool. So I don't leave the class off with like something hideous. <laughs> Anyway, I just I just keep playing with everything. It's that's basically all it is. I mean, you're playing with it. <laughs> oh God, that's not so wrong. <laughs> okay, ignore that. Ignore that. Ignore that statement, please. Oh my God. Now it's now it's just falling apart. Let's be honest. This is falling apart now. <laughs> So I just keep playing around and playing around. <laughs> Did 
Did I say something bad? I didn't mean to. I don't think I cussed, though. I don't think I cussed. Which is something that I was worried I would do, so... Yay! Round of applause for me, right? <laughs> Alright, so I think this looks kind of cool. I, I, I think... I don't know. I'm like all crazy now. <laughs> but anyway, I just keep using all the techniques I showed you guys until I got somewhere I liked. And I'm going to get somewhere I like. Just if I, it's just the last thing I do right now. Okay, um, let me see. Filter. I'm going to get somewhere I like. And again, I'm just doing the thing where I change the hue of the top one. Let me see, I'm trying to read. You can also find past classes if possible. At this stage, you should be able to just say, pick one arrow, looks like a circle. You could if you, if you, uh, like, you know, erase, if you made a copy and then erased around it, you could then, you know, make it bigger or smaller. Okay, and I'm just going to do the difference bloom thing again. I don't really like using the anaglyph for this because I don't like it like repeating itself but you could do, use that as well if you wanted to. Um, filter. I really like how this looks. I think this is pretty but hold on I'm gonna I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna I like I seriously it can take me forever just going back doing the same things over and over and over and over again until I get it to something I really, really, really like. The reason I keep doing difference and going to white is because if you have like a white a black background and you go to like a darker background and you go to white, sometimes there'll be something really, really cool you find there. So I do that a lot. I'll, I'll uh, color fill the top one white and then go to difference or color fill it black and go to difference if it's a lighter one. And a lot of times there'll be something cool there. It's just not happening today, of course, when I'm doing my class. But um, anyway... <laughs> Okay, anyway, I'm going to clear this. Are these the same? Yeah, those are the same. I, I, if you wanted to, you could load image. That's I've done some where, um, like, I'll show you another thing I like to do real quick. Say I go to this, okay? And I really, really, really like a part of it. You can just go ahead and watch. Transform it. Oh. And zoom up on that one little spot you like. And I do that a lot. Like, say, and then I would just say that was an abstract, you know. And I do that a lot. I'll just, if I'm not getting anywhere I really like, but I see this one little spot that I love so much. A lot of times I'll transform to it. Sometimes I like a whole strip, so I'll have to, I save it into my photos, and then I'll actually image load onto a different size canvas so that it fits. Or if it's a square, I like you know because as long as it's your own stuff going on and it ends up looking like your own thing, I don't see the problem with it. All right, so I'm just gonna do the difference bloom one more time. See if there's anything I like. If not, I'm just gonna leave it like this. So.
even sometimes, like, if I do this and it starts getting too rough in, like, certain spots, like, I'll show you what I mean. You see right here how it's getting, like, this rough, different colored look, which I hate, personally. All I do is I go and I grab a color from around it, and I'll just cover it up. Well, if it's not, hold on, I'll show you what I mean real quick. I gotta make it into one piece so I can actually mess with it. I'll just go over it like that and I'll go and paint over the whole thing if I really like where it's gotten I, I'll do that of course I, I would first color just uh, not contrast no serifs okay let me do this real quick They see how it's rough in a lot of places so I would just if I like these colors which I'm not really feeling but I would just go over and fill up any spots that were getting really really rough um, I'm just gonna go through these one more time see if there's anything cool in here Kind of cool. I like the colors in that. Anyway, so I'm just gonna leave it as this, though. Hold on. I think I did something wrong. Hold on. I'm just gonna go back real quick because I liked it where it was back. This is also a reason to save them a lot because sometimes you'll just go too far and you're like, no. Oh, darn it. Anyway, so I'm just going to leave it as that for now. Yeah, I tap a lot. Of course, I, you can always go back in and... Why is it being brown? What is it? Oh, okay, I know why. Well, so anyway, I, with this one, I would go back over some of the spots and um, just fill them up if they were getting too rough in some areas and that can always turn out to be something really cool too you know it adds a lot of cool stuff to it so anyway I would leave it like this you could keep playing and playing and playing but I think what time is it Connor? I've already been going over an hour so I'm just gonna call that the class <laughs> I hope I taught someone something. Is there any questions before I leave? Is there any questions? I hope I wasn't silent for too many parts and didn't say anything stupid too often. Um, <laughs> I hope I did okay. Uh, and I hope, I think there's going to be a combo after this. And I hope you guys uh, try out some of these techniques yourself. And I hope you um, have fun. Enjoy it.